research? The, the, the list of conditions expands on a daily basis. Initially, as I think that most of us are familiar with, who are familiar with laser, uh, realize that uh, osteoarthritis is probably the number one use, or at least traditionally became the number one use. Um, at this point in time, it certainly remains a large part of the practice, is treatment of osteoarthritis, um, but is expanded into so many other areas that it's even hard to remember them all. Um, certainly, we're using it quite a bit um, for um, non-healing wounds, um, you know, when we see them. We're using laser both um, pre-surgically uh, for a lot of orthopedic conditions as well as post-surgically. Uh, conditions such as, such as anterior cruciate ligament uh, repairs, uh, luxating patella repairs, um, fracture repairs. Um, rather than just using a post-surgically, we find that if we use it pre-surgically uh, as well as post-surgically, um, that the response of the patient seems to be um, very, very quick as far as, um, as, as weight-bearing. Um, in addition to uh, pre- and post-surgical, as well as arthritis and other orthopedic conditions, uh, as I already alluded to, some wounds that um, are slow to heal we have used it on. I've used it on a series of corneal ulcers, particularly ulcers of an indolent uh, or a rodent ulcer type. Um, we have found that it, um, that it speeds healing with that as well. Um, we have dabbled a bit in using it in some cats with chronic renal disease. Not enough at this point in time for, really, for me really to comment um, how I feel about it, um, but it is another usage um, that we've, we've extended to as well. Uh, acute otitis and chronic otitis, uh, we have found it's very effective um, for that as well as, as a result of decrease, as, as, a, um, as an additive to decreasing the inflammation, making the pet much more comfortable. Um, soft tissue trauma, acute soft tissue trauma, um, when there isn't actually a fracture, uh, we find that it will go a long way to re relieving uh, the relief of discomfort from um, the pets. And we've also used it for um, what's commonly referred to, of course, in human medicine as TBI or traumatic brain injury. Um, kittens that have perhaps gotten, perhaps have, have um, uh, received trauma, um, dogs that have been hit by cars, cats that have been hit by cars. When there's head injury and head trauma, uh, we've used it for that as well, um, along the lines with some of the research that has been done at this point in time uh, in human medicine, actually some of it um, right here in, in Boston at Mass General. Uh, I think initially, um, as all of us were, I was a bit skeptical, even though I had been a successful laser patient, um, wasn't necessarily thinking it was the, the next greatest thing to come along. Um, since that time, however, uh, I've been absolutely uh, mesmerized by the number of conditions that we've used it on and, and the efficacy. Um, I've gotten to a point where, and I discussed this with, um, with the other doctors here not long ago, that if we see a patient that we have felt was a good laser candidate for whatever the condition was, uh, be it osteoarthritis, uh, be it uh, degenerative disc disease, which is a usage that uh, I almost forgot to mention, that's, that's a huge usage for it, or back issues and degenerative disc disease as well as spondylosis. But if we've gotten a patient to three or four treatments and we're not seeing any response, or the client doesn't think they've witnessed any change, we really go back and take a second look at two things. Um, first of all, we'll take a look and, and verify that our, our protocol is the appropriate protocol. But even more importantly, if we haven't seen some sort of improvement by about the third or fourth treatment, we really start to question our diagnosis and look further to see if there's something we have missed. Um, so as far as efficacy is concerned, when I asked the other veterinarian here who's um, younger than I am, which means he might have been a little bit more resistant at first, having um, finished his training more recent, we're seeing considerably greater than 90% in conditions when we expect it to work. And what I mean by that, um, some of these really out there conditions that one might try it on, like degenerative myelopathy, uh, when we have no expectation, can't really count those into the mix. But as the typical things, uh, as I mentioned previously, at 90% or greater efficacy.